see all of it, miss some of it, have someone else you think would be interested in listening, um, it'll be up on our website at churchwindows.com uh, typically by the end of the week. So you can come back, watch it for free there as well. And the topic today I am following uh, from one of our workbooks. So if you like the videos, but you would really rather have something written down that you can refer to, you can head out to churchwindows.com and in our workbook section, um, you can look up Donations Workbook 106. Okay, so the guide that I'm following today is from Donations Workbook 106, specifically pages 17 through 26. So if, if that's something you're interested, you can head out there, purchase a workbook, um, and then you will have it to look back to. All right, so something I do want to point out up here in the top right is the version, okay? This presentation is in version 21. Um, we literally just released this. So you might not have this version yet. If you don't, it's okay. Um, the stuff I'm going to be covering is the same in uh, version 20 as well but uh, we're releasing it slowly, okay, because we don't want to um, bombard us here at support and then make it longer for us to be able to support you or help you. So if you haven't gotten version 21 yet, keep an eye, check your uh, email, it'll be coming to you soon, all right? I'm going to go ahead and open up donations. From here, um, you can get into donation statements two different ways. Uh, right in the middle of the screen here, is donation statement. You can also get to donation statement up here at the top under reports export donation statement. Whichever button you click, it's going to take you to the exact same spot. It's going to take you to step one. Um, step one of the donation statement is where you set up who is going to need a statement. So the part where we do the customizing and the editing, that's on step two. Step one is really who needs a statement. The default for church windows is to pull statements for only people that have giving in this date range. Of course, you can customize it, change it to meet the criteria that you want when you're printing statements. But for our example today, I'm gonna leave it on the default and just hit next. And that's going to take us to step two, where we can get to the statement designer, which is our topic for today. All right, so it's building the report, it's pulling my people. <clears throat> Now, up here at the top, we have the statement layout box. Um, if you hit the down arrow, there's going to be some default templates in here you can pick from. Um, you're going to have to pick from one as a starting point, and then from that one, you can go in and build it and customize. Most people I talk to like to go with the windowed envelope. Um, this is pretty basic. Um, it gives lots of good information, but of course you can customize it. So I'm going to go ahead and go with windowed envelope here. Then once you pick the layout that you want, over here on the right, this is your statement designer. Okay, This is what we're going to be working in today. Let me go ahead and click that so that designer opens up for us. Um, and this screen, honestly, it can be a little intimidating. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, lots of options. You can do as much or as little in here as you want. Okay, so don't feel like you have to come in here and start changing everything. Um, if you if you look down here, bottom left, hit the preview, it's going to show you just some sample data. This will not be your people. Um, but in this preview, it's going to give you an idea of what the statement's going to look like. So you can see what you like, what you don't like, what you want to change. Um, but if you get in here and you view the preview and you find, you know, I really like how this looks, then you don't even need to do anything in here, okay? This is just optional. So bottom left, I'm going to get back to this designer button. So if, if, I, if that was too quick, let me show you again. Down here, bottom left, the designer button. This shows you this screen where you can make changes. The preview button down here jumps you back to an example of what the layout's going to look like. Okay, so while you are in the designer button, go and make changes, jump to the preview so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. That just saves you from having to save, close, and then actually run the statement, say, oh, I need to change this, and then come having to come back in. Okay. So 
First thing I want to point out um, is over here on the right. This is your toolbox. This is where you're going to find a lot of the different things you're going to need for customizing. Uh, there is a scroll down here if your monitor is not tall enough. You can definitely scroll down and see there's lots and lots of options in here. I don't have time to go through every single thing that's listed over here on the right within the next 20 minutes or 15 minutes now. Um, but keep in mind, in the report designer, you can hit your F1 key on your keyboard, and that was going to open up the extensive help section um, of the report designer. So it's actually going to go in and give you a bullet point for every single one of these things over here in your toolbox and give you a detailed explanation of what it is and how to use it. Okay, so if you really want to dive in and get more information than what I'm going over today, go into your report designer, hit your F1 key on your keyboard, and it'll give you that, that information. All right, so over here back on the left, all of these fields you're seeing have their own unique box. So each field, if we were to, say, compare this to something in, in Publisher, if you're familiar with Publisher or Word, each field is going to be like a text box. So you can click on each field and actually click and hold and drag it to wherever you need to. Okay. Now this windowed envelope that we picked is set up to fit if you fold it and slide it right into a regular standard size windowed envelope. So as far as coming in and actually moving this field around is probably not going to be a great idea because it won't fit in your envelope because you need to see the name and the address. But all of these other fields up here feel free to move and customize, okay? And you, just because this fits a windowed envelope doesn't mean you have to specifically use a windowed envelope, okay? You can always print labels. All right, but something I do want to show you um, over here on the right, just as an example, is how easy it is to grab a field that's available and add it to your statement layout to customize it. Um, one of the fields that I think is really helpful let me find it, is called Statement Print Date. It's right over here. Um, it's basically going to show the person who's going to print on, this, on the statement the date you printed these reports out for people to refer to. Okay, So if you have a field over here on the right that you want to add to your layout, you just click and hold and drag and drop it wherever you want. I'm going to put it right over here. So this is actually going to print the date that I'm sending these statements off to the printer. Now once I drop the field, say I need to create a label, I want people to know what that date is because right now it's just going to print 08-23-2018. I need to make a label for it. So similar to creating a text box, you're going to come over to the right in your toolbox again and you're looking for a label, click and hold, you're going to drop it right where you want it. And then just double click and you can type in whatever you want it to say. So I'm going to say statement print date. Now you can use a label uh, for anything. If you just want to add a memo or you need to label something differently, this label field is a great option to create a text box, type something in, place it wherever you want. Um, another great feature is that you can add a logo. Uh, I've seen some gorgeous statements that people have customized where they actually input a picture of some kind or specifically their church logo. Um, so over here on the right, you have this logo or image option. If you click and hold, again, drag and drop it. You can adjust the size of the box depending on how big you want the label to be or the logo to be. And then over here in the right, under image, hit the little dot, 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 and this will allow you to browse to a location on your computer. I'm going to go to desktop because that's where I put my little picture. Select it, open it, and now I can pop in this image. I'm just going to shrink these fields to make some room. I'm going to fit it right there. So now if I come down to the bottom left, go to my preview, I can see real quick at a glance, here's where I added my statement print date, and over here's my logo that I put in. All right, pretty straightforward there. And of course, um, as you're working, you can always go up to the top left, do a save as, and title the, title the layout, whatever you like. Um, let's see, what is next? So on page 20, the next thing it talks about is up here at the top toolbars. Very, very similar to what you would see in a Microsoft Office application like, like Word or Publisher. 
you have your font boxes, you have an undo, you can bold, italicize, underline, change colors, add a background color if you wish, lots of options up here across the top. Keep in mind, like I said before, each field is its own unique field. So if you want to change the font for a field, you have to have it selected, then come up. If you need to change the font or the font size from multiple fields, you can click and hold, grab a bunch of fields at once, they'll all be selected, and then you can come up here again and adjust your font to whatever you want. But each field is its own unique field, okay? So going in up at the top and just changing this is not going to change the font for the rest of the report. All right, let's talk about this lower section. Uh, we have three pieces here. We have a detail report, we have an account summary report, and then we have a quarterly section. So if we jump back to our preview, the account summary section is right here in the middle. We'll actually talk about this first. This is going to list each account the person has given to within the date range, and then it's going to list different column information. This is all customizable. If you don't care to see any prior giving, say you guys don't do prepaids, you can hide a column. If you don't care to see their over under, you don't want to see how far behind they are in their pledge or how far ahead they are, you can hide that column as well. To do that, we're going to go back to our designer, we're going to come up to the top, and we're going to hit this Edit Account Summary button. Right? This is where you make changes to that summary section. When the window opens, you have an Appearance tab. You can go in and completely customize with fonts and colors each column that makes up the Account Summary section. Or on the Columns tab, you can come in here and remove fields. If I don't want to see over under, I'll highlight it, move it over to the left, and that will remove that field from printing on the report. See, it's gone. Also, if you don't like the Account Summary section, you don't want to see it, up here at the top right, removing this, or top left, I'm sorry, removing this check mark, that's going to hide that section. It will completely remove it from printing. All right, next section I want to talk about is the detail section. So that was that top section that I pointed out. Um, this is actually going to show every transaction that came in or every gift that came in within your statement date range. Sometimes people don't like to see this. Um, maybe it's too much information. Maybe people give every Sunday and it is like five pages long at the end of the year, you can hide this. Some people I talk to, they want to see it because people like to sit and actually go through and make sure every gift is showing up on their statement. It's completely up to you. But any changes to that is up here under Edit Detail section. Again, remove the check mark here if you don't want to see it. Um, but if you click Edit Detail section, it's going to open up another window where you can, you can really customize it. If you would like it to print across then down instead of down then across, you can change that. If you prefer to have it print in one column, you think it's a little bit neater, feel free to remove that check mark. And then that detail section, I'll show you real quick, will print in one straight column with comments over here. Also, you can go to the Columns tab. You can really pick and choose what columns you want to see. If you don't enter any comments while you're entering donations, simply highlight line item comments, move it over to the left. If you don't put in check numbers, move it over to the left. There's also a Fonts tab where you can go in and set specifically for that section how you want it to appear. All right, our last section that I want to go over is our quarterly section. That's this information right here. Um, again, you can hide it if you don't like to see it, um, but the information is available to print if you want. Um, again, here's the check mark to remove it. If you hit the Edit Quarterly section, you are going to get another window, and you can specify here on the options what you want to see. If you just want the quarterly totals and you don't care to see what came in each month, you can uncheck the box. You can also specify down here if you want one or two columns. That's up to you. Then there's the Columns tab. 
Um, you can hide um, the non-pledged and pledged giving. If you just want to see a total for the month or for the quarter, you can remove these as well. Okay. So de that quarterly section is pretty straightforward, but you can definitely, definitely do some customizing. Um, down here at the bottom, this is your IRS statement. I do want to point this out. Um, this is a IRS approved statement that the programmers have written in to appear. Uh, only benefits provided are tan intangible religious services. Um, this is not something you can change, but you can delete it. If for some reason you want to put a different type of comment in, you can by using the label field and just deleting this field on the designer. Uh, down here at the bottom, you have two places for memos. Let me jump back to the designer. You have the global memo and the statement memo. Global memo is a, uh, an opportunity for you to write up something that's going to print at the bottom of every person's statement. A lot of people like to go in and thank people for their continued giving, list a contact person or a phone number and or email where once people receive their statements, if they have questions, it'll give them someone to contact. Um, I'll show you in, on an, another screen where you actually type that up. And then there's also the statement memo. This is where you would go in and add a statement to one person's uh, donation statement so it wouldn't print on everyone's. So let me show you that. I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to hit the X to close here. So global memo is right here. Okay, this is a Dropbox. This is where you go in and you create that message that's going to print on every one statement by hitting this Add, Edit, Delete button. You come in here, you title it, you put in the message of what you want it to say, and it'll be stored down here at the bottom for you to use again. So you could create one for each quarter, and then you could also do an end of year one and then repick them each year. Over here on the right, this is that personalized statement memo I was referring to, the one at the very bottom, the, the long skinny box. This would be if you wanted to type just a message for that specific person. So if I wanted to type a specific thank you note to Ann Barry, I would type that right here in this box, and then this would only print on his specific statement. Okay, so personalized statement memo is just for the person's line you're typing it in. Global memo is going to go on every one statement. All right. We are right at 20 minutes, guys, and that is my last page from the workbook I needed to cover. I know there was a lot of information there, so if you have questions or want me to go over something, please type it in the question section, and I'll be happy to do that. Let me check on Josh and see how he's doing getting these answered here. All right, someone's saying the column for check number needs to be longer. What do I do? Barbara, that's a great question. Let me go back into the statement designer and I'll show you how to adjust that. So up at the top, I'm going to go to the edit detail section button. On the columns tab, there's a width field, okay? So this applies to all of the columns that you're gonna have on your statement layout. You just up the width a little bit. Okay, that's going to give you more room. So some people have like super long check numbers. You up the width a little bit and that will give you the space that you need. If you don't want to see the prior giving column print on your statements, you can definitely remove any column from this section. We would go up to the top and hit Edit Account Summary. Sorry, guys, that keeps opening on my second monitor. Uh, go to the Columns tab. Find the column you want to remove. Move it over to the left. That's going to take it off of the report. Say OK. And now we don't have it printing anymore. All right, let me find another question here I can read out. Mm, let's see.
All right. If you have a question, type it in, guys. This is um, looks like Josh did a great job getting everything answered for me while I was presenting. Um, <clears throat> but if you come up with anything, feel free to type that in, and I will do my best to get an answer for you. Oh, I do want to show you something real quick. Uh, let me close this. If you are not a pledging church, okay, so if, if your church does not do pledging, I get plenty of churches that don't, there is an option here to hide all pledging information from printing on the statements. So I'm going to grab my highlighter because I think this is pretty important here. That little checkbox, if you check that box, it's going to automatically remove any pledging information from showing up on your statement, okay? So if you don't pledge, check that box. It'll stay checked for you unless someone comes in and unchecks it, all right? But keep in mind, you want to keep that checked, and that will hide anything involving pledging information or the words pledging. All right, you guys, if you've gotten the information that you're looking for, I'm three minutes past, um, feel free to leave, sign out. That's totally fine if you got what you were looking for. Um, but if you're typing, please hit send so I don't cut you off because I'm not seeing any more questions come in. I, I'll close up the webinar and let you get back to work here. Uh, Terry, you might be on an older version. Uh, Terry's mentioning that she doesn't see the checkbox uh, for pledging information. On version 20, that checkbox was actually on back on step one. And I'm in a new version, so it's going to look different. But back on step one, there was an options tab up here, Terry. You would need to go to that options tab. And then I think the checkbox was down at the bottom. If you can't find it, call me and then call the support line and I'll chat with you about it. But I'm pretty sure it was step one on the options tab. Paula's asking, can you put in headers for two pages? Let me look real quick, Paula. We, it would need to be in the statement designer, so let's get back in there. It's working. Come on. Let me try this again here. All right, you know what, Paula, why don't you call in? I'll show you, I'll show you that way because we're past and it's a pretty specific question. Paula, call in, support line, ask for Rachel, and I can show you how to do it in the report designer. All right, guys, I don't see anything else coming in. I am going to go ahead and close the webinar. Um, I hope you learned something new. I hope you found something that will help make printing statements a little bit easier when the time comes. Um, like I said, this is recorded. You can find it out at churchwindows.com. It should be up by the end of the week. And you can also purchase the workbook that I pulled this information from. It was Donations 106 um, out at churchwindows.com. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.